Hey everyone, welcome back to another OSCP Journey video. I know it's a little weird, I'm, I'm putting out two videos almost back to back, not really back to back, but uh, just closer in time than you would have probably expected. Uh, basically, I've been, uh, started working on some homework and it got kind of tough, so I wanted to take a break, and I figured while I take a break, I would, uh, work on a machine that I've, I've created. So, I've got this, uh, kind of, uh, software, it's called Propane. Uh, some of you may know about it, some of you may not. Propane is a, uh, King of the Hill platform, uh, which is kind of like a, an attack and defense CTF, but instead of capturing flags, you're just owning machines and kind of placing, you're placing a flag of sorts, uh, onto the machine you've hacked in order to get points. And the longer your flag is on that machine, the more points you get. Flag in Propane's case is just, uh, your, the name of you or your team inside of a team tag, like an HTML tag. Anyway, so that's, I've, I've got that set up, and I use that at my club all the time, and I've designed a lot of vulnerable machines for people to hack as part of the game. Well, recently I just fixed one of them that was actually not really all that possible to hack, uh, because it was missing a, a kind of crucial feature that was part of the challenge. And so in order for me to uh, get it working, I had to figure out how to hack it. Uh, so I did that, and it, it brought up a lot of new skills that I'm going to demonstrate here that I learned uh, while doing that. So I have hacked this machine already before, but um, I'm doing this as kind of a, a practice for myself and to show you guys what I've learned while doing that. So even though I've already done it and I kind of know the solution, uh, I don't know it off the top of my head. I just kind of sped run it last time, so I'm going to be kind of doing a full enumeration and everything this time. Uh, maybe we'll find more, one that, more than one way in. We'll see. But, let's go. So, first off, uh, let's find this machine. Since it's running on propane, uh, we can go look at all the vulnerable machines I have on my network of games. The machine we're going to go after today is called DB1. And this is its IP. So this is the IP of DB1. So let's go after DB1. Start a new team up session. Alright, um... And first things first, we want to let's give our give ourselves like a working directory. We'll work on the desktop like we normally do. Um, actually, we'll, we'll even make a DB1 folder. We'll, we'll work at DB1 folder. So let's make ourselves an inmap directory. Ooh, if we can spell, and then we will start our inmap scan. So we want to say inmap default scripts, enumerate service versions. Try to do operating system detection and go moderately fast at this IP. So also we want to output all formats to that inmap directory. We'll call it db1, so we can go look at it later if we need to. Well, let's just start that scan and see what we get back. So db1, the name of this machine tells me and. Try, I'm trying to look at this from perspective like I don't already know. Uh, the name of this machine tells me that we're probably going to be doing something with the database, whether that's SQL injection or uh, maybe just logging in and doing stuff via the database. We'll find out. Um, but that's kind of cool because I, I've had some trouble not doing uh, SQL map for some things and getting shells because you can actually get shells through SQL injection. Uh, and it's not too hard, but SQL map is usually a crutch there. And you can't use SQL map on the OSCP, so got to get over that crutch. All right, so our inmap scan is finished. Let's see what we got. We got 3306, looks like a MySQL database, MariaDB, uh, 8080, an HTTP server. We got a long string of HTTP. That was weird. Uh, port 443 is open. Port 80 is open, and port 21 is open, and it looks like we have a this FTP login allowed. In fact, it looks like this is the root directory for an IS server. So that that could be one potential place to look. Alright, uh, let's start like we normally do. We know it's a web box, so let's go check out what kind of stuff it's got on the web. So, IS screen, just like we saw before. Um... I also had HTTPS enabled, so let's go look at what is on that page. Oh wow, so we got an XAMPP server. Apache, MariaDB, PHP, and Perl, so that's juicy. 
Uh, looks like we got a PHP info. It just tells us a lot about our machine. So we've got this build of Windows. It's Windows 10. That's important. So we're not going to get any easy to easy to exploit stuff going on here as far as like actual service vulnerabilities. Um, patch 2.0 PHP file glob data, HPHP cool Get these registered stream filters Patchy environment. So we got some paths we can look at. So the path. Oh, giving us some good information. So we got it like a from this PHP info. We're getting a lot of good stuff. So we've got this is our path. It's our system root. There's a location cmd exe. Yeah. Apache information, so Apache is 2.4.29, 1.32, PHP is going to be PHP 7. Um, there's our document root, that might be important. And headers information. Just kind of going through this, see all what kind of information we could soak up. Looks like for the most part we found everything valuable that we want to find. Um, nothing too crazy yet. What was that? Uh, no hashing engine support. You never know. You find a password sent through here or something like that. Usually you probably won't in PHP info, but you never know. Here we go, we got some uh, environment values. So we've got our user profile, app data, processor architecture, AMD64. So we do have a 64 bit system. Group, username, it's interesting. Alright, well that's that's a plethora of information that's going to be super helpful to us. Um, before we dive down anymore, let's go ahead and look at that FTP service. FTP, connect as anonymous. Alright, looks like we can... Oh, that seems to be our homepage file. Let's, let's have fun, let's deface this. <laughs> Uh, open with text editor. Gotcha. Gotta get him, you know. Save, and then if we go to 102.8, make sure we take off this, and it's on port 80, not HTTPS. Huh. That's odd. Ah, there we go. <laughs> All right, so that confirms something interesting. Uh, that means this FTP uh, route is actually configured to be the same as the web route. Uh, we could potentially do a ASP reverse shell. So let's try that. I don't know if it'll work. I've tried it before. I haven't gotten it to work. Let me try again. So let's see. P reverse shell, per reverse shell, Python reverse shell. ASP. Okay, looks like there's some Kali ASP reverse shells like built in. So let's let's go do some exploring. Let's check those out, see if they'll be useful to us. ASP. 
ASP. This might be fun. Let's take a look at what's going on here. VB script. Okay, object DOM. Let's go look at that web page we're looking at. The exe. Wonder if this will even work. This is old, old, good old ASP shell. So let's see. Try to figure out how this is working. Let's see, looks like it is. Open that over. Looks like this. If I place this on there, this will be not like a rush shell, but like a just a script where I can execute shell commands. So that might be fun. So sure, let's copy. Just give it a shot. Over to desk, desktop db1 shell.asp. Alright, so got that. Let's open up that and drag it over here. Cool. So that anonymous FTP access has given us some cool stuff. So let's shell ASP. Ah, server error. Huh. Maybe we're not configured to run ASP shell. Let's try an ASPX. Let's say command ASP, ASPX. And. Alright, cool. Seems. Seems to be the same type of thing. So with ASPX and ASP and ASPX. Cool. So these will be similar to a basic PHP shell. Um, if they work. I found. Ah, uh, this is a different you know, typical 404. So the problem with the resource to look for can be displayed. Alright, so we're not having much luck there. Um, which stinks. Uh, that was kind of a rabbit hole that I'm aware of, but I think it should work, but I may not have it configured right, so I think it may just end up being a rabbit hole. Who knows? Uh, it was worth a shot, though. Uh, but we do have anonymous FTP file upload, so we can do something cool like uh, go ahead and um, uh, I can't think of anything we do right now because we don't have any code execution. But this is important to keep in mind for later because this will be an easy way for us to drop files on the box. We don't really have to run any PowerShell commands or anything because this is already here. So that's kind of cool, but we need command execution first. So let's go back and look at what we're already dealing with. So we look at PHP info, check out PHP admin. Usually PHP my admin is a GUI interface for a MySQL database. So if we have don't have to enter any creds or if we can guess like root tor or root root or something like that, we'll get in and we got in with no creds. It's just automatically configured as an XAMP dev environment. So that's great. So I would assume we have full root access to the database here. Uh, so we can do something. Let's check out tests maybe. I don't think there's anything in here. Um, but just to maybe we can see privileges. Yeah, so we're we're root. There's no other users on here. We're we're definitely root. Okay. Um. How can we turn this into a shell? There's no data in here, really. This is just all basic. Um. You know. Setup stuff, so there's no like actual database with creds or anything like that that we can go after. Um, well, maybe there is. Well, no, because this was set up without. Yeah, so there's nothing, nothing too valuable here in that regard. That's okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
getting a shell from SQL injection. So we'll use some neat uh, techniques to get this done. So uh, here, this is a great article. Uh, the damn vulnerable web app uh, is a great way to practice uh, SQL injection. I may have a um, video where I go through that later. I haven't really done this specifically before. Um, but I know for a fact that if, and this is just kind of uh, putting two and two together, if you can get a shell with SQL injection, well, that means you can also get a shell by running just SQL query. So we're not, we don't have a SQL injection vulnerability here. We just have a plain SQL command prompt. I can just run whatever SQL I want. I don't have to do any kind of weird escaping or anything like that. I just have a place where I can write SQL. So it's even easier. So all we have to do is take the, uh, kind of uh, attacks, the types of attacks and payloads that are being used when you do a SQL injection and just write them as normal queries. So it should be even easier than a SQL injection. So here they're doing like the injection part stuff. We're not interested in that. We want to see... Oh, here we go. We're about to pass it. So here they found the document root and they are uploading a file uh, to that document root. Okay, um, we know based on our PHP info that our document root is think C XAMP uh, HT docs. It's HT docs. Yeah, document root. So that's what we want to write to. Let's go ahead and copy that over. And they are doing a select. What's great about this is we don't have to worry about any permissioning. This is definitely going to work because we are root on the database right now uh, via the PHP at my admin. So uh, they're doing a select one into out file and writing that file. So that select one is writing a one. So let's do a better test in my opinion. We'll do a select. Uh, we'll do some HTML. We'll just write a, we'll write a new web page to, to the XAMPP server. So we'll say select H1. Um, in the game. So we're on the server, and we'll say into out file. Make this pretty. Out file, go. Um, I don't know if this will work with forward slashes on Windows or not. We may have to do like double escape back backslash. We'll find out, but we'll say. Call this test.html and hit go. Okay, we got some weird errors, um, but let's see if. Okay. Though I guess they were just warning, so we turned empty results set to zero. All that looks good. Let's go to test.html, see if it wrote. And it did! So we are writing files uh, via SQL right now, which is pretty dang cool. Well, we know this is an Apache server, it's XAMPP, and we've seen that our. PHP is working based on our PHP info, so we are running PHP 7, so let's, let's get ourselves a shell. Um, so we can do command equals request. We're going to do a basic um, command shell here. Let's go ahead and save ourselves before we screw it all up and do double quotes. So we can write single quotes, so let's say command. And then we want to say system dollar command semicolon. All right, and this should give us the ability to pass a request parameter uh, called CMD, and that should pass directly into the system command and allow us to execute uh, Windows CMD commands, command prompt commands, or whatever. All right, uh, so let's call this shell PHP. All right, got the same kind of weird output again, but if we go to shell the PHP, all right, can't execute a Blake command. Well, that's fine, we'll give it a command to execute. So let's say dirt. All right, we've got command execution on this box. That's awesome. Um, let's see who we're running as. Oh, that's, that's, <laughs> this is poorly misconfigured. So Apache is, this whole XAMPP thing is running as system so we've got a system shell here right from our browser uh, let's let's upgrade ourselves um, uh, oh okay so what we can do is 
go into our I've got my scripts directory I've got a lot of useful scripts here uh, most importantly is I've got this NCAT portable windows binary that we're just going to drop on the box real quick no big deal we'll do it over our FTP um, wonder why that's being weird okay it worked so netcat is now on that machine um, now we need to start ourselves a listener so let's do that call this one shell so incat lvmp 37 actually let's find out what our IP is first 186 alright so we're listening let's go ahead and uh, do due diligence we don't want nobody sniffing our traffic here on the local network I remember how to do everything right uh, so NCAT's got the ability to allow you to use uh, SSL I think I just put my order of operations wrong so if we do dash LV MP1337 SSL. Perfect. So now we're listening with SSL and we'll connect to it with SSL the same way. So we are in, we know this is the web root of the IIS server. And in, we know there's some weird configurations going on, so we may not be able to do this correctly. But if we're lucky, and I've got a good feeling we will be lucky. Uh, we'll be able to uh, determine where the IS Weber is. So if we just go look at it right now as it is. Oh, well, we deleted the, <laughs> the Weber page. Um, Alright, well, let's see. I know where this is, but just so you guys have some Google foo here. So where is the IS Weber? So usually it is in inet pub www root. So this directory here is what we're going to want to reference in our command uh, whenever we're executing netcat. So we're not going to send a shell over right away. We're just going to want to see if we can get a connection back. So if we go to, uh, if we say, oh man, we need to specify. C colon inet pub www root cat dot exe connect with a cell and we should get a connection back yeah all right cool so we got a connection it's not doing anything but it's a connection so if we drop that and now we try to send ourselves a shell via the same means we should be good to go so if we say uh, I'm not sure what order I should do all this in but we say slash e or dash e windows system 32 cmd.exe alright this should send us a command shell over via incap Alright, so we got a failed SSL connection. So, ah, I see. That was why. Try again. And we got a command prompt. Who are we? We are system. So we have effectively owned this machine. Um, pretty nice. Cool, so now we can kind of poke around and see all the, um, where all the misconfigurations happen. So if you check out INET Pub, we already know this one's a pretty nasty one. So we've got the FTP root isn't using the FTP root, it is using the web root. So here's all that, all those files we uploaded. And then our XAMP, that's already misconfigured to hell. Uh, we got our PHP my admin. We could, uh, just based on the fact that XAMPS on here, we could establish a lot of persistence on here. Not just uh, web shells, but also 
got this, uh, we can turn on the Tomcat server. I think that's here, yeah. You know, Tomcat, um, we could do, like, some SQL jobs and stuff like that. There's all kinds of crazy stuff in there. This box is, is terribly set up. But, think about this like this. Um, the way I designed this box is a lot of times, uh, developers who just want to set up a quick local copy will use something like XAMP or MAMP or stuff like that, um, and they're just sitting and running and if you find this one of these boxes on the network and it's just running the XAMP server because they're testing dev stuff this is how you can take them over if they haven't configured a password for anything um, you know if you're already on somebody's network and you find one of these machines that's an easy end what we just did so uh, all this is modern this is the latest I, not like probably not the latest version probably like a couple minor release versions down from XAMP now, but we didn't use like an XAMP exploit or anything, but so this is just a, a modern version of XAMP with a modern version of Windows, Windows 10. Um, it's just a whole misconfiguration thing, so be sure to look out for stuff like this. I know I'm trying to, uh, misconfigurations are a big deal. I know when I did the um, uh, Metasploitable 3 machine, misconfiguration of the Jenkins server, just, it just sitting out there, you can run commands right off of Jenkins. It's the same kind of thing. Uh, but here, our best bet was the SQL database. So because we had root access to the MySQL database via PHP MyAdmin, we were able to get right in. Um, and keep in mind, even if you're using, uh, you are using creden credentials. If you're stuck with default or weak credentials for your users, then it's still the same same issue there. Anyway, I've talked enough. Uh, that was me hacking this box. It was kind of fun. Uh, learn some new stuff. Uh, I kind of did it a little bit differently than I did the first time. First time I did it, I wrote directly to the um, XAMP web root, and then I did a PowerShell get command to get the, or I did the PowerShell one liner that was the equivalent of wget to pull over the netcat binary rather than use the FTP, so I actually took a, an easier route this time that I wasn't aware of. So there you go. Uh, hacking boxes all day. Again, don't know when I'll come out with another video, but uh, this one was just a, a one-off that I really wanted to do real quick since it was on the brain. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching.